be on a save this uh a5 a3 okay rook a6 rook e7 takes 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 <clears throat> bishop a8 d6 i mean rook h7 just wins the game i mean I mean this is a bit much okay white's still completely winning what but actually you know what's funny maybe white's still no white's not still winning because you can get rid of the pawns Yeah, so, I mean, so this is the game Fabiano played. This is obviously the game he's referring to. This is a game against Eddie Marsala. Eddie Marsala. Now, let's see. You know, one thing that I think has to be said in regards to uh, regards to accounts, I think this has to be said, is that, you know, accounts are not automatically marked as, like, you know, violated fair play or things like that. It, it is a complicated situation. Um, now, anytime you look at an account and you see that there are no games, like, there are no games that have been played since June 6th. This is, this is actually the thing that's a little bit little bit little bit peculiar is that again you know their, their accounts were after the game ends they don't play again and you're seeing here that june 6th is the last time this account played or actually you can't see that because i'm on the wrong scene but um now you can see it right like you'll see the last games here were played on june 6th and title two saying no games have been played since june 6th so i mean when fabiano says that like the, the account might not might not be marked um but it does look a little bit weird that there there have been no games played since then just looks definitely looks a little bit a little bit odd um again like it's like the game the, he play it's, it's a really really crushing game by the way like crushing game Fabiano just gets flat out smoked like make no mistake about it Fabiano gets like completely destroyed um <clears throat> check his losses I mean well I don't know like nobody knows what the what exactly the um what exactly the process is like I know I know in the past I think chess.com is that something where like the count the account gets marked and they also I think the account doesn't get marked but then you play on another account or things like that so I mean I don't know exactly what their what their whole thing is um but it is definitely a little bit odd okay but I mean he just gets crushed out of move 20. I mean he's just completely lost with the white piece in 20 moves here I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I mean, this, this is just a, a wild game. I don't, I don't know what to say, but clearly Fabiano thinks something happened. I mean, there, there's no doubt in Fabiano's mind. So, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Because of the time usage, yeah. I, I mean, who knows? Who knows? But to be fair, like in this game, he in, in this game he uses like 58 seconds on move number 11. Like he uses 58 seconds to play rook b1, but yeah yeah I mean Fabiano got absolutely steamrolled in the game and then then he blunders at the end ends in a draw I mean I've had that happen a million times to me too by the way where it's like I'm just getting steamrolled in the game and then at the end once they get low on time magically blunders start appearing so who knows I mean Fabiano seems pretty convinced but I mean unless chess.com says something I, I guess we'll I mean we'll probably never actually know honestly so yeah anyway all right so so that was the game that that uh that we're taking a look at so some interesting stuff in the c-squared podcast um interesting things in terms of these videos but yeah nothing nothing too crazy at any rate so it is it is what it is all right you guys so on that note i am going to um we're gonna keep going let me figure out what i'm actually doing because I, I forget what i was gonna do um i think i'm gonna get back to playing some blitz i think that's what i want to do see if anybody wants to play blitz if not i'll, I'll uh, keep going with the speed run so give me one second let me um let me log in with my main account and log in <clears throat> give me one second and I'll look to see if I can play some blitz if I can't play some blitz then I'll then I'll continue with the speed run I mean at any rate my, my general read though is that Fabiano seems pretty convinced and the fact that the account has not had any game since June 6 is definitely a red flag that that is very very clearly a red flag but again unless chess.com says something we'll, we'll never we'll never actually know so it is it is what it is as the saying goes so all right, let's put the music back on and let's get going let's see who's online um players all players let's wait for it to load okay Raunik is playing a blitz match I think against somebody so let's send out some other challenges if I can get some blitz games I'll get some blitz games if not I'll, I'll probably continue with the speed run 
Can he not take a break? Who? Me or Fabiano or who? I don't know. I don't know what you mean by that. Um, see one of the Chicken Chest podcast guys beat Magus and CCT Swiss. That is not the same thing. Laurent Fresnay is a 2700 level player, you guys. That's not the same thing at all. Oh, we could watch Roundack, I guess, for a little bit if you guys want me to. Do you want me to cover this? Okay, I'll cover this for a little bit. Let, let's cover Let's cover the match. Uh, Roundack and, Round and Lazarek playing the Junior Speech Chess Championship, so it's half-half. No, the guy you said hasn't played in a while. The thing is, he has not played since that Title Tuesday event. That's what's definitely a little bit suspicious. Is this some kind of weird theory? Might be. How long was the event? It was on June 6th. It was on June 6th. Um, it was the evening title Tuesday, which I played, which I played, played uh, in Norway as well. Wild game here, by the way, in game two between Lazvik and Roundup. Roundup has active bishop, active knight, bishop c6. Very hard to judge what's going on here. What I think about Magnus' form in Norwich has, it was not good. It was not good. Let's leave it at that. So. But at any rate, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, Fabio always seemed pretty convinced. Who knows, like, what it is. But, yeah, hard to judge. By the way, there's Rook F7 and Rook, Rook, Rook C8. White's Queen's a little bit loose here. Has Abaji Gupta played any title Tuesdays? I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I heard that rumor too. I mean, nobody nobody knows what the situation is. I mean, of course, Chess.com knows what the situation is, but um, yeah. All right, so what's going on here? So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Even material on the board here. We'll see. Bishop c6 played. Uh, maybe queen f4 is an idea here. Not 100% sure. Why did I count in English? Uh, because why not? So, at any rate, we'll see. What do we have here? Uh, queen f4, bishop d5 played. Maybe white can go... A I guess white can't go a4 here, but maybe a4, a5. Maybe we get more views of his title Mondays instead of title Tuesday. Maybe. You never know. Never know. Can we play Blitz? Blitz is always on the table, but not not right now. I'm eating carrots, you guys. Carrots. Like a rabbit. Shirt seems fine. I like it. Yeah. So, all right, what's going on here? Still round maybe wants to go G5H4. Again, if white can get the pawn rolling, white is better, but the pawn is glued to A2 right now. But we'll see. Why does chess.com withhold that information? Because I assume it's private. They're, they're private agreements or things like that. I don't know. All right, let's see what we're going to get here. So, nice chill music. Yeah, no, no, it's good. It's good stuff. Sure, so we get a3, okay. Let's see, Roundup plays rook f7 here. Probably rook ad1. I think Lazovic should be a little bit better with the rooks in the center. Maybe he can sack here at some point, because the bishop is really well placed. Mm. Some people assume you don't work as hard as others still win tournaments. I feel it's ridiculous. What do you think? Um, well, I'm a streamer first. I said before, um, I do study during tournaments, but I'm a streamer first. I don't, I don't spend 10 hours every day studying chess the way that like Fabiano does. That is the reality. Um, 
So when I say I'm a streamer first and not a pro chess player, like I'm being honest about, it. I don't spend 10 hours every day studying chess anymore. Um, so yeah, I, I know people get annoyed and they think, they think that I'm making it up, but you know, I stream a lot of hours. It's kind of hard. If you think that I have time to study chess on top of streaming eight, nine hours every day. I mean, I, I, I must be like a zombie or something, honestly. You're a dedicated streamer. I appreciate that. Wow. Game ends in a draw. Okay. Next game, 1-1. One, one. Well, your streaming is studying chess just less formally. I mean, playing Blitz games is not really studying chess, in my opinion. Um, but maybe. Maybe. You never know. I mean, it's, it's hard to judge. But anyway. Yeah. All right. But you have the classic Ber Ig Ig Bin Ein Un Berliner, uh, A5, Queen, A5, A4, Queen E7. This is, of course, what I had against Tamer Rajbov in the candidates. We know you do it all, YouTube, Twitter. You must be God. Yeah, yeah. So, who said Fabi studies 10 hours every day? Well, he might not do it now, but Fabian has always studied a lot. He's been a very serious uh, studier. Nowadays, I don't know for sure, honestly, but uh, definitely, like, if you go back pre-pandemic, he was, like, really studying a lot every single day. Um, yeah. Can't you be a streamer and a pro chess player? You're earning, you're, you play in professional events, earn money, pretty self-explanatory. Well, yes, it depends on what your what your general definition of it is. Um, but my general definition of being a pro player is basically like someone who's studying, who's trying to play in the top level tournaments all the time. I'm not actively trying to play in every single tournament out there. Um, whereas I was doing that a couple of years ago. Probably rookie one. Guys, it's obvious Hikaru is a twin who studies classical nonstop, and that's the Hikaru that goes to OTB tournaments, right? I've been eating some carrots, you guys. Yeah, I, I have, my twin is the one who studies chess and goes and plays, right? Plot twist, yeah. That's that's a good plot twist, yeah. It's a good plot twist, like the movie Prestige. I've never seen that movie. I'll have to check it out. Mm hmm that's funny yeah I only study shots on the airplane screens on the right of the event I'm about to win right yeah but anyway let's see what are, what are we gonna get we got knight c4 played by played by round here last it goes knight b7 we got 93 probably g6 here I assume yeah So let's see. All right, so knight b7, knight e3. Um, waiting for a move here from from Lazovic. I assume I'll go knight f8 here, or maybe g6, or maybe queen e8, knight f5, bishop f8. Also an idea to go queen e8 and bishop f8. Earlier we saw his twin on chat. His name was Jim Hikaru too, right? Yeah. Okay, bishop b7 or knight c5. Okay, if white gets f3 with a. With the two bishops, white maybe has a small advantage long term, but I think black should be okay. Should be okay. Probably f3 should be played here to guard the pawn at e4, if I, if, I, if I were to guess. Okay, knight h5 played, maybe knight g3, maybe knight f4. I feel like it's knowing when to reroute a knight is super difficult. Yeah, it's one of the hardest things to do in chess. Um, but I think it's generally it's when you don't have other concepts like in this position black doesn't have a whole lot to do all black can do is stack the rooks or try to put the knights on these slight weaknesses like g3 and f4 those are the only ideas that that black has like 96 is probably good you don't want to trade well you could trade and go bishop a6 I suppose hmm, multiple options here 96 is also possible as well so let's see what we get here from um from from Lazovic this match probably is gonna be very close by the way I, I'd say that my prediction is that last is a slight very very slight favorite 
but I think both players are uh, are close. What's your pet peeve? You are people calling you pro, pro chess player? No, that's not my pet peeve. I don't mind if people want to say that. Um, the only reason that I don't necessarily like people saying that is because that, that sort of, to me, based on my my definition or at least how I perceive what a pro player is, like it, I find it like kind of like a little bit. Um, a little bit insulting to everybody else in a sense because I'm, I'm not like I, I don't study chess 10 hours every day like I, I'm not studying chess every single day the way that I once did that that is just true I can just say that outright um so that, that's why to me sometimes it bothers me when people say that because I feel like it's like it's really diminishing everything okay so waiting for a move here probably like 92 maybe 91 Gukesh won yesterday yeah Beating all the guys studying 10 hours a day, though, LMAO? Maybe, maybe. I mean, like, Noderbeck, for example. I guarantee you Noderbeck is, like, really studying hard every day. If Noderbeck, if Noderbeck isn't studying five hours every day, I would be shocked. Shocked, actually. I would be completely shocked. So, yeah. But who knows? Who knows? Remains to be seen. Magus has gotten worse because his locals have him drink, play poker, and listen to music really loudly where he lives. Maybe. I, I mean, I don't know what Magnus does. I mean, yeah, no clue. Um, on the other hand of that coin, I think it bothers people when you say you're not a pro chess player, you don't study and take that serious, and you go and beat everyone like Fabio, TB, LOL. Well, I mean, that's just chess. What do you want me to say? That's just chess. I mean, it's a very easy game to play. It's a very easy game to master. You don't have to waste your life on it. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what you guys expect me to say. Like, it's, I mean, if somebody can be a streamer and get to the top of chess, so, I mean, I don't know why everyone doesn't just, like, become world champion. Okay. Uh, just like Elon Musk said, yeah, chess is a very simple game. You should play Polytopia, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's Polytopia, I think, was the game that Elon likes um but anyway all right but yeah I mean I, I don't really care either way but sometimes it's just like when people act as though because I feel like when people say that they're they're basically saying they don't believe me. they're basically saying that I'm lying when I say that I don't study chess 10 hours a day that's actually why I get annoyed when people try to say that I'm a pro chess player is because that to me that's the way that I read it is like the 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 the, the um the assumption or what what's being inferred by what when they say that is that like basically I'm lying and I am studying chess 10 hours a day when I'm not um so yeah to each their own obviously okay why'd you go queen off two and trade the queens off here you can be a pro and not practice look at alan iverson yes ai was one of the best one of the best of all time yeah one of the best so all right what, what what's going on here queen h4 probably like queen f2 will be played or bishop f2 both both possible is, is both moves are possible your confessional room visits made Magnus go in there a few times, leading the pack. Magnus would have done it anyway, uh, but we're the only two players who did use the uh, use it. I think people are just confusing the order. You used to be a pro chess player, but now that you've moved the stream, they can't believe. No, I think it's that people actually just don't believe me. I think that basically they think I'm just making it up and I'm studying like 10 hours every day and I'm taking chess very seriously when I'm not. Because if that's what I was doing, I would play a lot more. And that's also why I don't play every term under some, because if I don't feel like I can put in the work to to put in a good performance I'm not gonna play it's just that simple okay I don't like Bishop G3 I think I think Lazvik is starting to get a bit of a bit of an advantage maybe knight D3 here but we'll see Uh, have you ever thought about commentating for other chess events if you aren't participating your professionals are spot on I mean it would be great too but at the end of the day I mean I if I'm not if I'm not competing in tournaments then I'm obviously going to be streaming and streaming streaming is my main job so yeah I would say I put in a, a lot of work for Norway I did did work hard during the event but I didn't put in a ton of work ahead of the ahead of the event so yeah th th I mean that, that's just the the general gist of it okay problem for white here is that your rook is tied to the pawn maybe you can slowly reroute the king but I think black should be completely fine bum, bum, bum. so let's see okay Bishop C4 King King F8 played um what are the typical sponsorships that support pro chess players uh very limited sponsorships sometimes like financial companies but generally it's just prize money you live off the pri prize money that you make yeah so yeah let's see um 
Okay, Radar's got to move soon. Probably bring bring the king or try to bring the bishop and the knight because otherwise black is just going to be better here, I think. Still jokes aside, you study a couple hours here and there during the weekend, maybe. I'm not going to reveal my secrets, you guys. Um, but I'm not studying, I'm not studying like 10 hours every day. Let's let's be very clear on that. So, all right. Probably I'm studying like nine. Oh, right. It said 10 just because it's actually nine. Good one. Is knight d3 a move here, by the way? Knight d3, rook d1, bishop a4. Maybe knight d3 is just good for black. I think black's actually close to being much better. Although knight d3, you can take and maybe run uh, takes, takes. King g2, there's f5 to open up the diagonal. Looks unpleasant. I don't know if Fabiano studies all day right now, but in the past, he definitely did. Yeah, he was studying a lot. This looks really... Is there bishop a4? And knight b... Yeah, there's bishop a4 and knight b2 and black's winning. Hmm. But this is also good enough. Rook d2 and bc5. Yeah, Radar's going to lose this game. It's going to be a 2-1 for Lazovic, I think, after king e7, king b6. Um, Hikaru, would you perform worse if you actually did study 10 hours a day? Probably I would because then I'd start to get sick of chess and look at the same stupid variations in the Berlin or Petrov or everything else over and over and over again, honestly. Are there more spawns now that chess is getting more attention before? No, I don't think so, actually. I, I don't believe that. Uh, is there bishop e2 and king e1? I think Lazovic just messed this up. It's going to be a draw now. Um, but yeah, so so as, as I was saying, though, I mean, that's the thing. At the, uh, 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 Lazovic just trapped his rook here. Bishop d1, maybe f5. No, you just take and go b3. You just take and go b3 and you win. Just take and b3. But I guess you still win with king c2. You still win. Bishop h3, rook b3. Black should try to go g4 somewhere in here, by the way. Because otherwise, white's going to get the rook around. Eventually, white's going to bring the rook in. Like rook d1 and then rook h1 and, and the rook gets in. Okay, eventually white should win this, but still a ways to go. Probably rook a1 now. Yeah, rook h1 and rook h5. Yeah. What was that? Bishop b3, I think, was a draw. I think bishop b3 and a4 is a draw, but this still might be a draw. Now you can check and take. Take, yeah. Take. Okay, this also works to take. Yeah. So, all right, two to one for Radek. He does win when all said and done. Is it true that you and Little John have been working together for over 15 years? Pretty much, yeah. We, we had breaks, but mostly, yeah, we've been working together. Uh, I mean, the first major event that we worked together on was uh, the U.S. Championship in 2009, but we worked together. The first time we ever worked together on was a tournament that was actually never rated for FIDE purposes. It was held in Karabakh, Nagorno, or Nagorno-Karabakh, the disputed region between Armenia and Azerbaijan, and that was in 2005. That was the first time we ever worked together. I actually won a really nice game against Alexei Dreyev in that tournament. So, yeah, we've been working together a long time, nearly 20 years, nearly 20 years, long, long time ago. So, quite a bit. Okay, Queen A4 play. Let's see. Maybe Bishop B7 will be played here, probably, by Raunak. Do you get a sense of how much your opponents study when you play them? Um, On one hand, yes. On, on the other hand, no. No, it's just a mix. Were you surprised Fabiano played F5? I mean, I hadn't looked at it, so I knew it was a bad move. But I wasn't sure why it was a bad move. So, anyway. Okay, e3, probably going to move the knight to like e2 or something like this. I still think white should be better here. Or maybe black. Eh, is white better here? I guess round I can go knight b6, knight c4. Before streaming, how many hours do you study a day? Probably on average like five or six, I would say. Maybe some days more, other days, other days less. But I would say on average somewhere around like five days. That's what I would say. 
Yeah. But. All right. I mean, Black, Ronak again has a fairly easy position. What's going to happen is here, Lazarus going to put the Bishop on D3, try to attack uh, in the center of the board. What am I playing? Uh, my next tournament? I don't know what my next tournament is. Yeah. Five days? What's five days? I said five hours. I said like five hours, not five days. But anyway, do I like physics? No, I don't like physics. That's not my jam. Science type stuff's never been my jam. Um, 94, probably Queen E2, probably Queen E1. No, you didn't what? I didn't what, Soup Sailor? I didn't what? Uh, maybe you're not writing to me. I'm not sure. Oh, I said days at the end? Oh, oh, yeah. F yeah, like five, five to six hours. Oh, I said five days. Yeah, five to six hours. No, I studied, ch I studied chess for five days straight. Yeah, that's what I... Back in the old days, yes. Yeah. I studied chess for like 100 hours straight back in the old days. Uh, last of exposition is pretty mediocre here. Black can go F5. Bishop's not great. Pawns are decent on the king side, but I'd much rather be black here. Oh, the knight g5 maybe is a good move. Takes. Probably not, though. Takes, takes, g6. Pawns are a little bit wonky on the king side here. Yeah. Yeah, studying five days in a day, right? Yeah, yeah. Do I think soccer will get bigger when Messi comes to the USA? No, not at all, because Messi doesn't speak English. Um, I mean, Messi doesn't speak English, so because he doesn't speak English, sure, in the Spanish-speaking community, like in Miami, it'll be fine. But honestly, at the end of the day, like, I mean, it's not going to change much for, for Americans. If he spoke English, it might be. If he, if he actually spoke English, it might be a little bit different. Um, like, like, you know, if Ronaldo, for example, were to come to the US, maybe it would be different. I mean, I'm skeptical, but maybe. So, yeah, what, 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 what are we waiting for? Probably just queen b6 here to hit the pawn on d4. Maybe, uh, h6 looks bad. I, maybe queen b6, maybe bishop d6. I feel like, I feel like knight f6 was a bad move by Ronick. I don't like it. But queen b6 also allows f5 potentially, so not so simple. So, that, that, that's my take. I mean, I, I think, I think if, if Messi spoke spoke English like fluently I think it, it, there could be some chance but yeah I just I, I just don't see it happening I think Ronick's in a lot of trouble let me turn on the lines oh it says zeros after b4 interesting ox uh, on b4 knight a4 queen a5 b3 you can start to swap all the rooks off the board makes sense why am I not playing the GCL um because I ha, ha, I have to stream I have requirements things I have to do plain and simple yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I literally just took a three week vacation, you guys. And you're acting as though like, as though like, uh, I mean, I took a three week vacation for my real job. You know, at some point I have to actually work. I, I don't know about you guys, but normally that's how life works. That's normally how, how life works. When you take a three week vacation to go play chess, sooner or later you have to re return and actually work and make money. Um, okay. So waiting for a move here from from Lazovic. Let's see what let's see what he does. Um, knight f three ninety five is an idea. Maybe like rookie one, maybe f five at some point, but maybe a three two. But now you create a weakness on a six. This game's gonna hinge on this e four square. Very critical e four square is what this game will hinge upon. Takes a three week vacation to play chess. Returns to work playing chess. Exactly, you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, you guys. Yes, I, I I took a three week vacation to go play chess, and now I'm 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 streaming chess. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You and Magus would have been would have been would have been pretty dank. Yeah, it would have been pretty amazing. Okay, as I said, White's up a pawn, but it's going to hinge on this e4 square. Whether Black can use this e4 square. Maybe there's rook c4 and rook c8. I, I mean, maybe or actually no, rook c4 allows this fork. So yeah, stack like this makes sense. Pressure on the c3 pawn. I'd actually probably rather be Black here, maybe. If you can consolidate, because you're going to get an 84 long term, the structure is not great for white. When you're having fun, it's not really work. That's true, too. Yeah. Yes. Yes, this is a good point. They would have subbed out Vichy for Ikar. I think maybe. I, 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 don't, I don't know exactly. Yeah. 
Okay, if 94 here, there's C4. If takes, you lose knight. If 94, C4 takes, takes, takes. There's 95 with 4. G6 logical move. Hikaru beats anyone in the world right now. He's a special mindset. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I mean, I'm just a streamer, you guys. Life is life is good when you when you have a real job and you don't have to suffer playing playing chess every single day. Maybe F3, uh, C4. Okay, creates a weakness on D4. Probably going to be a draw if I had to guess. I don't know many physical chess boards. I have a handful, but not not anything really nice. No, just a handful, but that's it. Nothing out of this world, that's for sure. So, all right. Takes, takes, probably knight d5, maybe queen b4, probably knight d5. QVC still beats you sometimes, yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, maybe queen c7, maybe there's something else you can do here. Hard to judge. I think Charlie would smoke you. Do you mean moist or you mean Charlie, some other Charlie? So. Oh, you're waiting for a move round. It's probably going to go like queen d8. Maybe queen d... I don't know. Queen d7, there's knight b6. Queen c7, something. Have you ever asked yourself why you're so good? No, because uh, I've just... I've played a lot of chess. I've studied a lot of chess. So uh, chess is one of those things where... Chess is one of those games that's very pure. I mean, you get to where you are because, because of the amount of work you put in. You put in a lot of work, good things happen. You don't put in a lot of work, good things don't happen, um, generally. So it's just that simple. It's just a dedication. The amount the amount of work you put in is a direct result of where you get to, in terms of playing at least. Would I've had this mindset? Would, would I've had this? Would you have the stream first mindset of chess more lucrative? Uh, you know, it's interesting because in 2019, prior to everything popping off, I actually started streaming, and, and it's funny because at the time I was streaming and I, I was actually doing worse and worse in tournaments uh, as I was trying to as I was trying to grow my community. So it's an interesting question. It, it, it is kind of interesting. I don't know actually. I'm not sure. Let's see. Okay, whites up a pawn. Great knight on e5. White has an advantage, whether it's anything major, who knows. Maybe knight d7 here. Yeah, 2019 was a pretty bad year for me in terms of classical chess. Is there rook a8 and queen a3 or something? I'm feeling like there's a typical right triangle in here. Yeah, like rook, rook a8, rook b8, and maybe queen c4 or something. Queen b7, probably still a draw. What are we looking at? This is a junior speech chess championship. There's a match between Dennis Lasovic and Radek Sadwani. That's what's going on. I will get back to speed run, I think, later on. Unless I end up in some, like, really long, deep match. But pretty unlikely. Like, knight e3, rook d8. I mean, again, Radek's probably going to hold this. This will most likely be a draw. I'd be surprised if it's not. Master Chef will be much later on in the stream, much later on, towards the end. Although I'm actually feeling a little bit tired right now for whatever reason. Maybe I need to get more coffee. Okay, we get knight d5 here, probably trade the knights and queen d8 here. Yeah. Oh, uh, what what are of your chess plays gotten better because of streaming? I don't think anything's gotten better other than I, don't, I just, I literally don't care. I just play the tournament. If I do well, great. I do badly, oh well, I have a real job. Like, what's the big deal? Uh, probably King G7 or Knight E7, Knight F5, another idea here. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's the bottom line. I mean, that is a big difference. Like Fabiano, for example, when you when you listen to Fabiano talking about Norway chess, he says how his brain stopped working. Like it's true, but also one of the reasons that his brain started doing funny things and he and he kind of forgot everything at the board is because there was so much pressure on Fabiano. Fabiano saw the future. He saw number two in the world. He saw a candidates tournament, chance to become the world champion. All this was flashing before Fabiano's eyes or flashing. You know, flashing before yeah all this was flashing before his eyes and um so because all that's flashing before his eyes there's just a massive pressure on him whereas when i go into the game it's like okay well hey if i win the game i guess i win norway chess maybe i get number two like big deal who cares not that much doesn't mean anything so i don't feel any pressure whatsoever whereas everyone else is just feeling this massive massive pressure um and so like you know with fabiano when he says his brain just stopped working the reason that happened is because of the massive massive pressure that he was under that's the bottom line this game should be a draw it's still going to go a little bit longer but it should be a draw um okay five or okay four everything draws 
Do I watch chess matches from the past online? And who's your favorite player ever? Sometimes, but uh, Gary, Gary's the man. Okay, Rook A4, Knight G5. I mean, bottom line, Lazarus trying to go Rook B2 and Rook B7. Rook B2. Okay. Oh, no, you can't go Rook B2 because there's Rook B7 blocking. Do I feel any pressure against Fabiano? Um, Rook A7. Just keep the Rook on 7th rank. So... Um, but yeah, in, in general terms, so yeah, I didn't feel any pressure when I played Fabiano. It was just fun. I mean, it was just fun to play. It's fun to play chess. Like when I was playing Fabiano, I was thinking to myself, it's like, man, like this, this, it's really fun playing this tournament. I'm gonna miss playing, playing, playing chess. I'm gonna miss it. Um, but yeah, it's like I'm gonna miss playing because I have to go back to my real job. So for me, like as the tournament's winding down, I'm feeling really, really good about everything. It's just been a fun ride playing the tournament. Um, where is it? Knight C3. Oh my God. You cannot be serious. What the heck was that? And it's even worse because now Las Vegas is down 3 1. Yeah. I don't know what that. When you're down 2 1 there, you can't do that. If the match is tight or something, it can happen. But down a point there, you cannot allow that sort of thing to happen. By the way, this is a position I had against L. Vladimir Kramnik, the former world chess champion, the world rapid and blitz before the pandemic in, I believe in Moscow in 2019. I think I had this, this variation against him with the black pieces. Hey, Car, well done on the cans. I know you're going to crush it again next time you got this. Well, if I even qualify, we'll see. But yeah, I think I'm going to go get some more coffee. So I'll be right back, you guys. Let me, let me, let me fuel up. Okay, what happened? Sorry, you guys. Sorry. Took forever to heat up my water. Sorry. All right, we're back. Okay, what, what happened? So it's still 3-1. They're still playing game number game number four. Yeah, I, my water my water heater thing wasn't working at all. Sorry about that. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'm apologizing for taking a break. <laughs> Thank you so much. Killer dog for subscribing. Thank you so much. Killer dog. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Sorry about that, you guys. All right, so let's keep going. Yeah, because I don't have I don't possess a coffee machine, you guys. I just have a I just have instant coffee. That's just how I've always been. White is probably a little bit better if he can get rook c1 in and put pressure on the pawn and keep the chain intact. If black can go f5 and bishop d5 or break the chain, then black's better. If white can get rook c1, maybe rook c3, white will get winning chances. But I'm not sure white's gonna get that. Bro, Hikar, never in a chest, but love your entertaining and energy entertainment and energy. Keep it winning the game of life, best prize. Thank you so much to Alpha Forever. Appreciate it. Buy at least a French press, you guys. I can't, I can't, I, I, I can't. I mean, you saw me. I'm just like, I'm cutting my own hair. I mean, instant coffee. Like, yeah. Contrary to popular opinion, I'm not worth $50 million. Also, Knight B3, excellent move by Roundy. He just wants to go Rook B4 and create a bash with the Knight on D4. So, yeah. Pretty, pretty straightforward, you guys. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Rook before idea night D4. Um, instant coffee. I mean, a lot of people get angry at me about instant coffee. I mean, I, I understand why people get mad, but it is what it is. So, okay. Rook before played. Idea night D4. Maybe A5 here. I already don't like this for last week. It's about to be 4-1. Yeah. We'll see. Not poor enough for instant coffee and self-haircut. Yeah, exactly, you guys. Totally. Yeah. Ah, good stuff. Okay, now I'm back. Okay. So this I hope this match gets closer because I thought this was gonna be a close match. If it's not, we're gonna do the speed run pretty soon, but we'll see. I thought you we were gonna go blonde. That was one of the ideas. I might still go blonde. You never know. But we'll see. Okay, King F8. So 
Lazvik trying to bring the king and go knight d4. Actually, wait, Lazvik's black here. Uh, he has the black pieces. So he he's trying to get the advantage. Maybe knight d4 somewhere in here. Maybe a5. Um, we'll see. All the food he carries is from Costco. Not all of it, but a good chunk, yeah. Yeah, but actually, it's, it, the reason I'd be careful when I say that is because Dennis Lazvik, he's a talented junior player from Belarus. And of course, everybody knows Belarus. Bela, Bela Russia, that means white Russia. So when I say, I should be careful when I say he, he's playing with the black pieces, not that he's black, because he's from white Russia. So anyway, um, let's see. What, what, what's Ranek going to do here? I think Ranek's going to lose this game, actually, is what I expect. So yeah, Rook B1, maybe Knight D4 here in A5. Huh? I don't know what's haunt about, but anyway, yeah. Knight d4 or a5. One of the two moves should be played here. One of the two moves for sure. You said forward, yeah, because I thought Lazvik had the white pieces in this game, but he's the black pieces. That's what I thought. Yeah, no, that was on me. Probably a5 here to lock the rook. I think a5 has to be. There's a black Russia. Yeah. There's a black Russia. Exactly, you guys. Totally. Um,. Probably A5 will be played. I don't talk to Gary Kasparov that frequently, no. No, I've had conversations with um, with uh, with Vichy much more than Gary, actually. I'm, I'm on pretty good terms with with, uh, with Vichy, but... Yeah, Gary I just almost never talk to. So, that's what it is. Okay, A5, it should be 5 standard. Somehow, the more I look at this, more I'm, I'm not liking this position for uh, for Rana. Do I bring instant coffee? No, but at the coffee generally, or not coffee, sorry. At the tournament generally, they provide you with like snacks and refreshments. So, for example, when I played Norway chess, um, they had um, they, they always had like some Snickers, some Twix, some chocolate. Also, they would always bring some sandwiches for Shakar and Mamadiarov because he always needed to eat lunch at the uh, at the playing site. So that's uh, that, that's the gist of of how tournaments work. So no, normally the tournaments I don't have to have to do anything like that, but. It is what it is. Yeah, it's, it, that's just how it is. Probably knight c3, bishop e6. Should be okay. Ice, when you get the biggest game of your career coming up, what do you eat beforehand? Um, Maybe bishop b3 and c4. I kind of like bishop b3 and c4 here for black. Um... G5, not a huge fan. Now White gets to infiltrate with Rook B7. Yeah, I would have gone Bishop B3 for sure there. Coffee would be a bad idea for classical because some of the games will probably surpass duration of the half-life of caffeine. That's why you keep pounding coffee. You drink like two or three cups every game. But yeah, I drink coffee. Coffee is my religion. Uh, again, we're going to get a draw here. I don't know why Lazvik allowed this. I mean, let me turn on the lines here. Yeah, Bishop B3 was the best move, and he, did, he played G5, which is bizarre. Yeah, this will be a draw. Why don't I have a coffee machine then? Coffee machine where? I don't know. But anyway. Should be a draw. If this match doesn't get close soon, I'm probably going to move along with our content. But we'll see. Okay, game out's in a draw. Three and a half, one and a half. Knowing, knowing my luck, I'll probably be on a break now. But we'll see. All right, let's send out some other challenges. I think they're on the break, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let's see, who else is online? Um, a lot of people online right now. Let's see if we can get a game. Elo Janov is online. Joppy's online. So so many good players online to play some Blitz against well, while, while we wait. So let's go to have 3 Maybe E3, C4. I think they're on a break, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, they're, they're on their break, so we'll play like two quick two quickies. Pineapple Espresso is a thing. I don't know what Pineapple Espresso is. It sounds pretty nasty. I don't know if Bishop D3 is right either, but it's a move. It's B6. Okay, I'll trade. I'll castle. Am I doing speedrun later? Yes, I am. I think I'm going to go Bishop B2, maybe Knight E2, Knight G3. Maybe Knight E5 just to trade some Knights. Maybe F3 somewhere. 
Maybe F4 also an idea. Who's there? I mean, I'm going to play here. I just want to make sure that he can't win some materials, but he can't. So he's going to have to go back. And then I'm going to play F4, Knight G3 again, just to relock the Knight on E5 here. And now he has to waste time here to go back. Now I assumed here I had Knight G3 or something, or even takes, and maybe just Knight G3 right away. By the way, if anyone was wondering, I have some kebab right here, some kebab. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's some kebab with rice. So, yeah. Let's see what we got. Um, I can play knight of five here. I can trade and go like bishop c4. He takes, which is interesting. Um, yeah. Why won't you let your beard uh, grow? It's It looks great. Okay, it takes. Now, I don't actually know here. Do I take with the f d pawn or not? Hmm. I think I'm going to take with the d pawn. I don't know if this is right, but it just feels like with the diags here, somehow there should be a big attack. But maybe I'm crazy. You never know. Mm hmm I sort of expected it's funny is I could try to sack here I could also just go here classic patented right triangle by the way we have the right triangle this should just be winning goes there of course I eat the juicer but I mean I've, I have so many pawns here that's very hard to believe I'm not just much better so here me rook c1 I think I'm gonna pin the pin the pawn I think that was stupid I should go on rookie one by the way I think I'm just gonna go here in e4 now maybe Actually, what am I? Actually, what am I doing? I'm playing this horribly. Wait, <laughs> I'm playing this terribly. Wait, what? Oh, he's got. Wait, what? Very weird decision by my opponent. Very, very weird. Uh, let's play Knight F6 here. Yeah, he got confused by rook c1, rook e1, yeah. True. I'm gonna go b6 here, play bishop b7, maybe bishop e7. It's not normally what I would do, but I'm gonna play it anyway. Yeah, it goes d5, I castle, play like... Um... Play a5, maybe knight a6 here. Just gonna guard the bishop here. You can always go c6 later. Maybe just rookie eight. I think I just trade the pawns and go knight e4. That's the idea here. Yeah, I trade, I go here. What happened to Eliana? He was he was like 27, 60 a couple years ago. Yeah, well, his rating, he got there very briefly and then went back down to 2,700. Um, and he just never, he never got there again. I mean, it's not like he wasn't a good player, but uh, something like that. Have I seen Frank's video? I don't, I don't really watch TikTok that, that often. So no, I have not seen it. Yeah, he goes queen d3. So I have like, maybe just knight d6 here. I know knight d6 is right, but it looks decent at least. There's knight d4, I expected that. Now, c5 is a move I think I should play here. Let's just take. Hikaru, unironically, the world's second best player. Something like that. I don't know. Now, I do have bishop a6 here. Yeah, I think it's just a blunder. I just take and take. I probably should have traded there first, but whatever. Actually, B5, I can even just take and fossilize him every which way. But no, that's great. That's great to hear, though, about Frank. That's good.
I mean, they should just be winning, no? Mm, we're doing well. Back, back off to the races. Back off to the races. Now, B5 looks like a very hardcore move just to lock the pawn on the dark square. Let's go here, hit the bishop. Go here, trade the rooks. Mm. Go here, maybe hit the bishop. I actually misplayed this a little bit because now I have to stop bishop d3. It's not as easy as it should be somehow. Ah, uh, but now, yeah, now I go here and I force the rooks off again and I just win the game. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, it's just very straightforward GG. I think we have time for one more. <clears throat> I think knight e5 is supposed to be fine here, threatening the checkmate with queen e2. Ice, ice pose side, and what about the ice man? I, mean, I guess I'll go c3 and d4, no reason not to. I know what you're asking about ice Poseidon for, but this castle here. <clears throat> I guess I'll play like Bishop G5 maybe. Actually, I kind of like Rookie 1 first. Rookie 1 makes more sense here just to overprotect the horse on E5. Could have played A4 too, I guess, but it makes more sense to overprotect it. Crazy that all the top 100 Russian players were all 2,700 plus at, at their peak. Yeah, of course. Drop back, target the pawn. My position's improving immensely here, by the way. But we'll see. Really, really nice position. You thought this was a vanilla ice song? No, this is a uh, queen. Yeah, this is this is queen, of course. Why would this be vanilla ice? Okay, so bishop g five is like very obviously the the idea here. <clears throat> Maybe like rookie D1. I'm going to drop back play like Bishop G3 somewhere in here. I don't love my position, but I think it's decent. I mean, knight of four, I have queen E3. Oh. I wonder something here. Goes a3. This looks a little bit suspicious to me. I don't know why, but it doesn't look right. This doesn't look right. Oh. How do I do this? Trying to find the right move. Mm. Um, I could go C6 and C7 maybe. We'll see if this works or not. I go here. I think I go here. <clears throat> now I could sack again. Like it looks right to sack, but I don't see the win. Maybe I just go like. Maybe I just take and go rook c1. And I just take the pawn. This actually seems fairly decent, honestly. 
Just take the pawn. I, I mean, did I just blunder? I think I did. Shoot. Oh, just great. I did blunder. Why did I do this? This is so ridiculously stupid by me. I might have to flag him. Oh, why did I do that? Oh my god, that was even worse. Oh my god, why did I do this? Jesus. Why did I sack the rook like a moron? That was such an easy draw. Ridiculous. Maybe I have a chance to draw now. Wait, maybe I have a chance to draw again. I think this might be a draw, by the way. This might be a draw now. I think I saved it. It's going to be a draw. Oh, I saved it. Jeez. I saved it. Okay, we gained some points at least. We gained one point. Let's watch the SEC again. I almost had a heart attack in that game, but let's watch the SEC again. Now, right, how did I save it? Don't even ask me. I don't know. Okay, so Ronak is playing Lazavik again. Down by two. One point? What do you mean? There's a draw, right? There's a draw. Oh, no, exclamation point. Sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. I misunderstood what you guys were saying. All right. Yeah, that was a terrible game, but I saved it. I saved it somehow. So what does it count? Okay, so black has an extra rook for a bishop and a pawn, but white's king is very safe on h2. How am I feeling about kick now that you're streaming? I feel very good. I've, I'm enjoying it immensely. It's been great. No, I'm having I'm having a blast. Probably just rook f1 or e4. Maybe rook d1 to trade the rooks. I think white is actually maybe better here. Or no, maybe not. Computer doesn't like white's position at all after bishop g7. Interesting. Now I see you're doing well. Oh, I'm doing great. Having a blast. Mainly just this week getting back into the swing of things. So rook, rook a5, maybe e5 here. But e5, bishop f8, and suddenly you have problems with your a pawn too. Bishop f8, rook a5. Or camp seven. Probably black is better here. But yeah, no, it's just this week is mainly about getting back into the swing of things. That's that's it. So just trying to get back into the swing of things, and then next week we'll be heavy on content. Because it's easy to forget. I only got I only got back on Tuesday or Monday evening late. So yeah, I, I haven't I haven't been uh I haven't been back that long. And I, I didn't really get a break from Norwich S either. I just came right back. And so it's it's just like it's just trying to slowly like decompress and get ready for everything. Yeah. You know? But it is what it is. So all right. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Okay, what do we have here? Rook A4 waiting for a move from Raunak. Idea knight d4 and e6. Yeah, he's gonna go knight d4. This is the idea, which is why you kind of have to move the rook back to stop knight d4. So he does go back. I mean, h4 is a very bold approach by uh, Glazer because he's basically undoubling the black pawns for no reason. Now it's going to be like some g5, h5, like g5, and at some point h5, h4, g4. I, I don't know why you want to undouble the pawns. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. 
And now, yeah, King G8, Rook A4, Rook D5. I'm just, I'm worried that after Rook D5, there's going to be some G5, H5, G4, something happening here. And, like, there was no good reason to undouble these pawns. These pawns were going nowhere. He couldn't push because the pawn, he can't push because he hangs the pawn. So these pawns are just glued. And so to undouble these pawns, I mean, I, I just don't like it at all. He's probably tilted that shoe. I forget that these are these are very young kids. Like they are they are quite young and they don't have a lot of match experience. So it's very easy to tilt. Yeah. It's very easy to tilt if you're not careful. It sounds like he guards exciting plans for stream content this summer. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I don't have anything planned right now, but I mean it's still a long way to go. Is there night there's I thought there might have been a rook f6 and knight h4 or something, but what did, what did that exist? Let me turn on the lines. Yeah, Rook F6, Rook F6 did, Rook F6 and IH4 did exist, but he missed it, so. Oh. All right. Still Drage, no, but Raonic is going to win. He's going to get these pawns pushing on the king side. I don't know quite how he's going to do it. Or wait, no, maybe White is King E3, King E4. Maybe not. Maybe I spoke a little bit too soon. There is King E3, King E4 potentially. Yeah, like I have this feeling that Rounder's gonna get H5, H4, and somehow he's gonna win this. I, I don't know what. Yeah, or Rook C5 and GG, why not? Yeah, because he undoubled these pawns, now it's actually very easy for Black to win. Yeah, like. King F5. Rook E8, King C4, King B5. Maybe it's still a draw, maybe. But you gotta go King C4, King B5. Only, only attempt. Problem I feel like with this position though is Black's gonna go H5, H4 at some point. King B6, Rook F5, of course. H5. Rook D4, GG. Rook D4 is GG on the spot. He missed it. Uh, King D6, yeah, GG, why not? Yeah, this isn't going to be a close match, it doesn't look like. Yeah, you just walk the king to f3, gg. We'll see if it gets close or not. It's four and a half, one and a half. Just love you guys, stream, been waiting for it all day. Awesome, thank you so much. Hope you guys are doing well. So, yeah, we're just here chilling, getting back to the swing of things as always. So, it's all good. All good. But I want to see a close match here. That's what you want to see, and it's not looking close. But of course, match yesterday, Gukesh was down 4 1 before he just went rolling and just like steamrolled uh, Pranav out of town. So maybe. But it's also worth watching his games because sometimes you see an opening that you haven't seen before. So it's like you can take a look at some of these lines. Hikar, I think you have the biggest fan base here in Germany, in Europe. Thank you so much. Yeah, I know there are a lot of chess fans in Germany who watch my stream and everything else. So yeah, big shout out to all the all the all the all the all the fans from Deutsch. Uh, any OTB tournaments ahead as of right now? No. I, I think it's very murky. Like, I probably I'm not playing the World Cup. Not 100% guaranteed. Isle of Man, unclear. Uh, US Championship, most likely I'm not playing that. Although, that, again, Fabiano speculated on something, but I actually just straight up have a direct conflict uh, with, with something else that I'm filming. So, um, so, uh, so yeah, US Championship, I'm not playing. Uh, Sync World Cup, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Will I ever play Title Tuesday? I always play Title Tuesday. It's my favorite event of the week, without a doubt. So, yeah. Filming a Netflix series? You never know. You never know. Yeah. All right, so what, what is uh, Raonic doing here? I mean, maybe D4, E4, try to play in the center. Maybe B4, B5 if you can. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. I should check out Full Swing. I'm I'm familiar with Full Swing is the golf show, right? I watched the first season, I think, of Full Swing. There might be 95 and Bishop B3 here, by the way. Maybe there's 95 here. He doesn't go for it. Am I gonna play the US senior when you're older? No. You know what, chat? I've watched this man stream since 2019. Thank you so much, Cagnus Marlson. Appreciate it. But yeah. Um 
No, you as senior when I'm older? No, you guys. I, I have a pretty straightforward plan with my chess career. Streaming is a little bit different, but with my chess career, I've said before, and I, I think I'll say it again, like, I do not intend to play professional chess. And by the way, just to be clear, when I say professional chess, I don't mean, like, what I'm doing now. I mean, like, just not play um, once I'm 40 years old. So once I'm 40, I mean, maybe I'll still play an occasional Rapid or Blitz tournament, but I do not intend to be playing, like, chess, like, tournaments like Norway chess past the age of 40. So... Yeah, I've said it before, but yeah, that's that's the bottom line. Because we get ninety four played here by uh, by Raonic. Let's see what Lazvik does here. I don't like I don't like knight b eight at all. I, I mean. I think Lazvik is on tilt. If he loses this game, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to like the speed run. But we'll see. Most players stop playing around 40, but remember Corshoy, this is true. Yeah, this is very true. Yeah, this is the uh, Junior Speed Chess Championship. Yeah, Junior Speed Chess Championship. I just thought I would tune into it for a little bit because it's some content to see who's winning. I thought this was gonna be a close match. It's turning out not to be a close match, kind of. But um, just I, I want to see if Lazvik can somehow mount a comeback. Vichy is still a strong player at 50. Vichy doesn't really play that much, though. Vichy is actually a lot like me. He plays, like, tournament here or there for fun. Um, just keeps his rating active, but he's not actively trying. Not even after your most successful year as world number one at age 39. If I'm world number one in the world at age 39, I will probably give everybody a gifted sub who's watching right now. That's actually not a lot of money. No, I should say something that's more, more worth it. Um... Yeah, if I'm world number one at 39, no, that's 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 pretty cheesy. There's got to be something better. Um, no, I want to say I'll, I'll I'll gift like I should say I'll gift like 10,000 subs if that happens. Give everybody a house, yes, yeah, yeah. No, no, if that if that happens, that would be shocking. Not so much because I don't think it's possible. Um, it's, it's possible per se, but I think I don't think Magus is going to continue losing points. That's the reason I think it's not realistic. It's not that I don't think I can't gain points or go up, but I think I think the reason that it's very unlikely is simply because Magnus. I don't expect him to lose twenty points every tournament. That's the bottom line. If if, if Magnus loses turn stops, if Magus starts losing points everywhere, then it's very much within the realm. Just like if Magus, for example, retires and never plays again and goes inactive, it could happen. But I don't really see a world where Magus just like quits chess right now and never uh, and never plays again. And I don't think he's going to lose 20 points every tournament. I mean, like, I think I very easily could get to 2,800 again. Getting much above 2,800, I think is very, very difficult. Lazvik, by the way, starting to get some play here on the queen side. I'm starting to like his position here. Um... But yeah, that, that's that's what I would say. But we'll see. All right. Speaking of Magnus, do you think his time is over? Because I think he doesn't have any more motivation. Actually, I'll give you guys my take. I think for Magnus, he's right now, he's very angry about what happened in Norwich. And he's like, he's like uh, I'll say it in like a very pleasant way rather than using certain choice words. But he's like, He's like fridge, 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 fridge these, fridge these clowns. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show them who the boss is in my next event. So I think Magnus is gonna come back angry, really motivated to basically like get rid of the the like bad taste in his mouth from Norway chess. So I actually think people people are sort of assuming that he's like he doesn't care. I think he's probably he's probably really pissed by Norway chess, and he probably is going to come back stronger. If he has another tournament like Norway chess, though, that does. That does sort of give that that will make people really, including myself, really wonder what the reality is. Though, uh, if he if he has another like really bad tournament in a row, then I think it could be a sign of something more serious. But I think based off of one tournament, that it's way too early to say that. Way 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 too early. Um, let's see what Raunak does here. Round deep in the tank, there's still five plus one, so it's kind of slow. Uh, maybe queen b1 to hit the bishop and guard the pawn, possibly, because the knight's starting to eat the juicer on e4 here. Magnus is learning a lot from watching Hikaru's success. What do you mean? I don't know what you mean by that exactly. Black's position looks pretty nice here. That's why I didn't want to tune away too too early, because I don't I don't want to tune out um tune out before like and watch the match get close. He won the he won the one before way too early even if it's like bad term yeah maybe rook d6 interesting choice here interesting 
But I think you can just take and then drop back to F8, probably. Braddock's rating started to look pretty juicy. Braddock at 3,100 is very, very juiceable for sure. Like, that's how Magnus or I could get a rating up significantly. So we could juice someone like Braddock when his rating is this high. For sure. Yeah. Like, queen d6, bishop e5, queen f8 is what I assume will happen. Although, queen d6, maybe, there, maybe there's bishop b4 too. So, takes with the rook. Obviously, take with the bishop, take the pawn on g7. When did I stop playing professional chess? In the year of 2020, you know, at the end of 2019, I've said the story a million times too, so it's repetitive for most people. But, uh, you know, my results in over the board chess were not great at the end of 2019. I sort of told myself um, that it, in going to 2020, I was going to take a long break. Normally, I played a tournament every January. It was either Gibraltar or Tata Steel in the Netherlands. And I basically told myself at the end of 2019, I'm going to take four or five months off, come back, take a break, be, be sharp and ready for the U.S. Championship in April of 2020. Now, as we all know, during this time, I decided, well, I'm just going to stream during this time as well until like January, February-ish. I'll just start, I'll just stream day to day, to day keep it going, uh, try to build the community, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then I think it was mid-February when I decided I'm going to take my last break before I start zoning in and getting ready for, for professional chess again. And I went to Kauai, one of the islands in Hawaii, and I went there for two weeks. And I went there, I think, right as, right as COVID was becoming a thing. And then by the time that... By the time that I was leaving Hawaii, that was when the lockdowns were happening. I was very, I was like, wasn't even sure I would be able to get out of Hawaii, but I did. And then I got home, started streaming every day. And the rest, as they say, is history. So I, I guess on some level, maybe I, I didn't actually realize it consciously, but subconsciously, I knew something was going to happen and I was in the right place at the right time. So yeah, that's when I retired from chess was at the end of 2019. Okay, what's going on? Is Ron not going to finally lose the game so we have a match or not? Bishop moves, maybe Queen e4. Still probably better for white, or be not better for white, sorry. Still probably within the margin where white can draw the game. So, yeah. Probably queen takes e4. Yeah, no normally these days I'm streaming about like eight to nine hours, uh, Monday through Friday. Yeah. Play blitz. I will play blitz later. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, scrolling down, it's one of the rules, avoid religion and political discussions. However, at Gotham, just Twitch not kick yet. Like to discuss the tops. Levy, Levy has his takes and that's that. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously like, yeah, it, it is what it is. But Levy's takes will probably start changing once he starts realizing just, um, uh, how d disadvantageous, uh, the, the, how, how, uh, how harmful it is to your bottom line when you have a takes a certain way. So. All right, F6 played here, probably like rook e6 and rook c6. Like 92, rook e6, 94, rook c6. Lazvik is, I mean, Lazvik has chances maybe to win this. We'll see. So, Levy's not that strong technically. Levy's a completely reasonable player, very, very strong amateur player, nothing, nothing wrong. But um, if you look at like a professional level, yeah, there, there are a lot of players who are stronger than him. Uh, rook d1 and 96 wins the game. Okay. We have a match in our hand. We're, we're, we have a match in our hands. There's 96 and then rook c1. Okay, this is going to become a match now. Run away. No, Levy's mistake, though, with chess was that he basically... He stopped playing as soon as he got the international master title. And that was his biggest mistake. He was still young. He was still improving. And when he stopped playing, that basically was the end of it for him. That, that basically kind of was the end. Are you, Wait, am I crazy here? Wait, sorry. Is it rook c let me turn the line yeah rook c1 is just winning what the heck because now white's gonna get some knight d4 knight f5 bunkiness here at some point like i guess okay one knight d4 and the knight a5 i mean this could go either way by the way rana could totally win this but yeah that, that was a mistake for levy is that he never um is that he stopped playing at the wrong time Trying to go g5. g5, g6 is winning, by the way. Feels like white should be winning somehow. No, white wins now. Check. All right, well, that was fun. Let's move on to the speedrun in a second. I'll watch one more game. One more game. If Lazvik doesn't win the next game, we're, we're done. We're going to move on. One more. If Lazvik doesn't win this game, we're done. 
Nice pull. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, we'll, we'll move on to the speed run very, very soon if, if Lazvik does not win this one. Yeah, he clutched. I'm not shocked, actually. Why am I rooting for Lazvik? Oh, it's not that I'm rooting for Lazvik. It's that I want the match to be close so I can cover it more. But if the match isn't close, then there's nothing to cover. So right now, I'm just rooting for Lazvik to get it close. Um, but I'm not really feeling it. Yeah, Gukesh had the big comeback last, uh, or yesterday, I should say. Yeah. I'm going to go chat. Wish you all the best. Hope, hope you enjoyed it, Charlie. Am I going to farm Ranak? I mean, this match still has another hour and a half or two to go. And if it's not close, I mean, I'm going to move on. So, very unlikely. Bullet portion could change a lot, but I think Ranak's the favorite in Bullet. TGIF. Yes, it is Friday today. Today is Friday. Yep. Run away. Okay, let's see what Ronick does here. Maybe like Knight B6. Maybe you just take it all. Maybe. Unclear. Stonk Market is doing completely fine. Um, yeah, Market is flat. I'm not shocked. It's been, it's been a big, big run. Market's had a big run, so I'm not surprised. This looks like some kind of weird theory though from from uh from Lazovic. some kind of weird theory like h6 g6 94 maybe something like this I, I don't know if it's right but 94 yeah sure enough he plays it which makes sense at what age did Kaspar retire from chess uh he retired from chess at I believe Gary was 40 39 or 40 I could be wrong on that I mean uh let me see if I can pull it up 2004, right? Yeah. Yeah, he retired in 2005, and he was born in 1963, right? I think he was born in... um. What year was he born? He was born in 19, 1963, yeah. So he retired when he was 41 or 42, yeah. But Gary, reti Gary retired when he was retired too soon, I think. Too soon. He should have played more, but he had this delusional idea that he was going to go become, like, president of Russia, which, of course, was never happening. All right, last game that we watch, unless, unless Lazovic wins. Wait, what? Yeah, I mean, Gary retired because he, he had big political ambitions. He thought he was going to become president of Russia. Um, and it didn't end up panning out, as we all know, so... C3 now? I mean... Maybe C3 is actually not that good, because you can take... Do I personally know any of the old players? Not really. Like, I know... Um, you're asking me, who do I know? Uh, I mean, I know Gary. I know Vichy. Those are really the only older players that I know. I mean, okay, there are people like Boris Gelfond, obviously, but if you're talking about, like, world champion level players, there aren't... Um, I can't really think of many. I can't, no. I never met Bobby Fischer, no. No, he was in Hungary when I was there, but I never met him. Yeah. Feels like, I mean, I really feel like in this game, Lazvik is going to lose here. I don't know why, but I don't like his position here at all. Kram, uh, Kramnik, of course, I know quite well. Yeah, Kramnik I played against many times. Kramnik is of the generation where I played against him. So... Have I met Magnus Carlson? Nah, I've never met Magnus. I mean, I I, I never met Magnus. You know, I've, I hope one day to meet him to play against him and, and see see how it goes. Probably knight c3 and queen c5 is the idea here for black, if I had to guess. I never met Magnus, only minus Carlson. <laughs> yeah. Last game that we cover. Because I'm losing my interest very quickly in this match. Be honest, are you and Magnus Coolers are still some strong rivalry? I think at this point we're pretty chill. Very, very chill. Very chill. I don't have a favorite player in terms of style, no. I mean Well, I do. I mean it was Gary when he was when when I when I was younger, but he's the only one. 
Hikaru, you have a big personality. You're an epic Sherman. Man. I do what I can, you guys. I'm a Sherman first. I, I, you know, I show up Monday through Friday, just like just like every every regular person who watches my stream. So uh, I do what I can. I'm glad you're, you're enjoying the stream. Thank you so much. So oh, let's see what we got. What do I think of Judah and her two sisters with two gems and I have the same family? How much is nature versus nurture? I mean, I think if you if you if you if you set that path, it's not that insane. If, if like you literally focus solely on chess, like if that's the focus from a very young age, I don't think it's crazy if that's the only focus that people can get to like GM. I, I think almost anyone can if you start young enough. So that that that's what I would say. Yeah, your streams make me happy. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Is it hard to transition from a classical tournament rap chess? Actually, my you know I said this in Norway that I feel like I'm playing better. Uh, I said I feel like I'm playing better classical chess and rapid or blitz. The reason I think for that is because right now I play so much blitz, so much rapid, all this on all this online stuff that I think that when I play classical, it's like it's actually nice to be able to think and slow it down. So I think it's quite difficult for me at least to to flip back from classical to the others, or uh, from classical to rapid and blitz. Do I know any Mexican GMs? Not, not really. There's Gilberto Hernandez, but I don't know him well. I mean, Manuel Leon Oyos, but I, I mean, of course, I haven't spoken to him in like 20 years. But, see. Try and see if there's anybody online to play against as well. Like, I'll challenge Nihal again, see if he wants to play. Does Nihal want to play? I sent a challenge out to Nihal since the match is kind of dying a little bit. 